Yeah. And you people want to keep spending money that you don't have, and you're going to be the ruination of this country. Our kids and grandkids are set to pay for all this debt. I'm fed up with it. You know, I'm a John I, F. Kennedy. I, I've, I've said everything that you've just said in, in speeches all over the place. Well, I, and I agree is, with you. Did, you. did you vote this last time? Did you I vote did for vote for it. Well, let's see you were wrong. No, you well, you let, me tell you, let me tell you what, what happened. Fast Wouldn't have, here's, here's why that happened. Let me tell you. First of all, we were just talking about, about what you can do in the Congress and you know, what you can't. Spending bills have to originate in the House. But we can pass whatever we want. But if the Senate, it still has to be passed in the Senate, and the President still has to sign it for it to become law. So we we can pass whatever spending cuts we want, which we which, we, which we've done. And if if the Senate doesn't take it up and they don't pass it, it doesn't become law. And so what happened? What's happened is is that trust me, on our side of the aisle, you saw Paul, if you saw Paul Ryan's budget. You know what needs to be done. We need to cut trillions from the debt from the budget. We all know that. But in the current climate, we, and we're going to we passed Ryan's budget, uh, and it's going to fail on the Senate side and not be not become law. So on the on the CR, the the, the continuing resolution, which was the controversial thing, uh, you know, we originally passed the House what we could pass. That we that we thought would also pass the Senate, and turns out it didn't even pass. The original bill didn't pass there, even though it's it's really, you know, like it's like throwing a pebble in a you know in in, 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 a, in a you know in, in the sand. I mean, it's the cuts the in in the original thing that we passed were still minuscule compared to the overall problem, but also recognize the the focus of that was only on what's called discretionary spending, which is the spending that we can actually control, non-defense discretionary spending, which means other than Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, interest on the debt, and other mandatory spending programs that the Congress can't, con can't change the spending level on unless you change pol the program itself, uh, and then you add defense, it leaves the part that we're focusing on with the, with the, these Continuing resolutions is only maybe about 20 to 25 percent of the overall federal spending. So even though you cut, and, and, the, and the overall number of not of this discretionary spending is about 550 to 600 billion dollars a year total. So even if you cut out all of that, everything the federal government does except for defense and all these other programs, you still can't balance, balance the budget. So we were able to get. We, you know, we were able to uh, pass uh, the bill cutting $100 billion from the President's 2011 budget and $61 billion from the actual 2010 spending levels, and that didn't pass the Senate. And so that's where the negotiation starts with the, with the President. And uh, we totally agree with what, you said, what you're saying, and, but what happens is, is it came to a point where in my view, and a lot of people's view, uh, that it would have been to the political advantage of the White House and to the Senate Democrats for for the government to temporarily close. It would have been pretty clear. It would have been major political advantage for that. And remember, the goal, and, and I know you, there's Democrats in the room, but from my perspective as a Republican, the goal for me is is to change out to a different president. And so. If you want to have, if you want to, you know, at some point, you have to say, okay, they started at zero cuts. We were able to, we were to get them up to about 38 and a half billion in, in, in uh, the ability of the government to spend money in the future, uh, compared to the 61 that we passed in the first bill. But that's as far as they were going to go, and they were going to allow, allow the government to shut down. And that would have, and what that would have done. Let me, let me finish. What that would have done is, then you would have had an outcry from the American, American people, rightfully so, that your government can't do their job and they're not providing service. And then there would have been a scramble to get the government back up and running. And the deal we would have got would have been almost no cuts at all. And that's the way 
with that, that was my assessment of the situation. So at that point, when we were looking at Paul Ryan's budget cutting trillions, that we voted on the, actually the next day, as, well, essentially, you know, the next week, next day. Um, at some point, I think you have to live to fight another day. And that was the decision I made. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, not everybody agrees with that. And, uh, but in the long, in the, in the long run, uh, that's all we were going to get. We couldn't force the Senate to sign it, to do it. We can't force the president to sign it. And I really think it would have been a big advantage to President Obama if the government would have closed. And they know it.